Hello, my name is Rod Burke. I'm B Biosecurity Officer with New South Wales DPI. I'd like to talk about barrier systems being the best way to eliminate AFB. So the simple facts are the bees have wings. Bees can fly wherever they want. Bees often get attracted to exposed honey. Many beekeepers leave honey exposed in many different ways. Managed, neglected slash unmanaged and feral colonies may succumb to AFB or other issues and their honey stores can then become available to robber bees. So anybody can get AFB. The chances are that you'll get AFB at some stage, especially if you have strong hives, which go further and find more stuff. So it is better to already be prepared to stop it in its tracks when you do. Frequent brood checks are our best way of picking up an AFB infection, but remember that affected hives can still appear clear of AFB, but may already have reached a stage of being infectious if their equipment was moved into another hive. AFB spores are microscopic, so they can be right in front of you and you won't see them. There are two main ways in which AFB spreads. As just mentioned, bees bring it back from outside the hive on their bodies. Physical contact with spores in an infected hive is a good way for them to get them that way, or internally through the rod tunny. The second way is the beekeeper. So the main beekeeper infection practices are moving frames of bees, brood, honey between hives, which we all do, sharing equipment, honey supers and other internal components between hives, using secondhand equipment without sterilising at first, buying, acquiring hives, newts colonies that are moved into their apiaries and not quarantined, allowing bees to access honey, wax cappings, sticky supers, etc. that you've got lying around, allowing weakened, diseased, dead hives to exist within their apiaries or lying around the shed that can eventually get robbed out. And this last way is a very good way that the beekeeper spreads AFB and it needs to be stopped. The code of practice requires beekeepers to do the following, to regularly check hives for disease, manage weak hives, bee-proof equipment and premises to stop bees accessing exposed honey, and keep good records. The code also recommends the use of a barrier system. The other main actions through which a beekeeper can spread AFB generally fall into the area which can be managed with a good barrier system. With no barrier system, you can easily spread AFB between multiple sites, making your problem bigger and even harder to contain. So barrier system explained. These are the main types. You have a single hive barrier, where generally no hive components are shared between hives, unless a hive is being split. With this system, a colony may still get AFB, but will be contained within the primary infected colony and not spread to others. Load, apiary, pallet or section barriers systems, are where a larger number of hives share equipment, be that an entire truckload, often known as a load, which could be up to 144 hives, a smaller apiary, each pallet within an apiary, or sections of it. For example, a load could be split into quarters and only share those boxes, but they still could be sharing between 30 or 40 hives. When using a load-based barrier system, AFB will spread only within the apiary, and not into others. It will spread though. Single hives clearly marked and fully traceable. You can see here one picture, the pallet has the numbers marked on it. Each box has the number marked on it. This is a red load, number 69, number 70. In the second picture, you can see boxes all clearly identified through the extraction those frames going straight back into the box that they came from. With a load barrier, what boxes went where last time? We don't know. There's more spread, but it's contained within that load. Statistics say, the fewer hives that share equipment, the lower the chance that a disease will spread within an apiary. 
And for 2020, social distancing is a great example for humans. The same with bees. A single high barrier system is therefore by far the best way to protect your business against widespread AFB infections and financial loss. Load based barrier systems are looked at as being faster and easier. This assumption by the beekeeper does not take into account the extra time, stress, and most importantly, the financial costs required to control an infection once you have found it, which may be a long time after you first got it and spread it further through moving boxes and equipment around. We've got an example, single hive barrier. With a single hive barrier, the beekeeper ensures that all frames go back in the same box after extraction which sounds impossible, but is actually quite easy. That means that if a hive has AFB, then its infectious components, which are the box and the frames, stay together as just one infectious unit. If that box goes anywhere, as in before the infection is discovered, then it is only going back onto the same already infected hive. It is easily identifiable and can be collected for radiation the reinfection rate is basically zero. For a load barrier, generally there is less emphasis by the beekeeper to put all extracted frames back into the same box, as no boxes are individually identified. One infected box in a load will probably be broken up into two or three infectious units and become anonymous and untraceable within that load of boxes. It is highly likely that the boxes will go back out onto that load of bees. So the chance that AFB can be spread to other hives is high. To eliminate any residual AFB spores within this load of boxes will require all of those boxes to be irradiated, which is costly. The reinfection rate from one AFB hive can be quite high. If you look at another comparison, a single hive barrier is a laser guided precision bombing operation on an identified and located target. The target is eliminated and the threat removed. A load barrier is a carpet bombing exercise based on sketchy secondhand intel where you're not even sure if the target is there and if you're bombing the right area. A lot of expense will be incurred and your chances of success are questionable and that will play on your mind as a beekeeper. Your accountant and bank manager will strongly advise you to use a single hive barrier. For good reason, it makes dollars and cents. So if we have a look at the good, truckload of bees, day one, hive has AFB. Next time supers from that extraction go out, back on the same hive. The next time they go back out, that hive is dead, there's been no spread. We look at the not quite as good, which is a load barrier, day one. We look the next time the load of supers go back out after extraction, potentially three other hives are gonna get infected, which has made it four hives with an infection. And when those boxes get extracted and go out again, there are a lot, lot more. It gets bigger and bigger. The more hives that get infected that you can't pinpoint, the quicker the infection spreads. And then there's the ugly, which is no barrier. It's the same increase in infection, except that you're spreading it over multiple loads of bees, making your problem harder and harder to find, identify and eliminate. Um, and that would play on my mind big time. I could not beekeep like that. Becomes a nightmare for your brain and for your bank balance. After five rounds of swapping out supers without a barrier system, you have literally truckloads of AFB. Many hives have already died and you've had to build many new colonies up to replace them. And that sounds too much like hard work to me. Give it a go. It's never too late to start or restart your single hive barrier system. Clearly identify all hives and boxes belonging to it. If you've got doubles or triples, do them in the field, get them marked up, you're on your way. Use new boxes with a foundation or irradiated equipment for those hives that need more space than the others on a big honey flow. Minimise your risk, but by using good records, you can afford to take some small risks when required. 
for example, when using a box or brood frames in another hive, just clearly mark it and record it. If you get AFB later on, you can trace the source back. And if you need some assistance setting up or with extracting, then contact me, Rod Burke at DPI. Thank you very much and enjoy your barrier systems.